It was a great honor to judge this award, and it was a great amount of fun, and it was, we read a lot of books, and a lot of good books. And I think, uh, well, I'd first really like to thank my, co my, uh, my co-judges, uh, Alexandra Marshall and Jay Perini. We had a high accord here. I think if you put your ear to the ground and you listen, you can hear some horror stories about judges doing these awards and the, the infighting and the, I'm never doing that thing again, that sort of thing. That was not the, that not the case here. There was um, great civility. There was, it was remarkably easy, and there was an, it was essentially unanimous. So it's, it's really something. I think our only regret is that we, can't, we couldn't pull up those two finalists into the winner category, and we couldn't pull up the, the two honorable mentions into the winner category, and then pluck two or three books that didn't get mentioned at all up into the winner category, because we just had such a fine time with these books. Um, so let me first uh, announce our two honorable mentions. Uh, one, the first is Karim Demetschke for Lifted by the Great Nothing. You can clap, I guess. <laughs> and the second honorable mention is Chigotze Obioma for The Fisherman. Our first finalist is Sarah Hulse, who writes under the name S.M. Hulse, uh, for Black River. <laughs> the judges write about Black River. In Black River, S.M. Hulse puts forward a classic, almost biblical tale, in which her characters must choose between good and evil, or deal with the chance that neither of those choices is either perfect or possible. Set in a heartbreakingly beautiful landscape from which her characters seem to emerge like outcrops of stone, this novel suggests that in order to move forward in life, one must re-examine the past without delusion. Hulse has given us a, lyric, a lyrical, spare, intensely felt piece of writing that heralds the beginning of an important career in American fiction. Sarah Hulse. Our next finalist is Margaret Malone. The judges write, in plain spoken American speech with great delicacy and wit, the nine stories in Margaret Malone's People Like You constantly beguile and surprise. With Chekhov, they share both compassion and brevity. They share with Carver and Beatty a confidence in the unforced sentiment of unadorned prose and in their matter-of-fact humor, which is often laugh-out-loud funny, they tap a long tradition of American humorists stretching from Mark Twain to Laurie Moore. What sets them apart are Malone's protagonists, dark, troubled women unafraid to puncture the pieties or to confront the void. Three of these stories involve a beleaguered wife named Cheryl, whose life gains real emotional heft despite the often absurd predicaments that she finds herself in, predicaments that look and feel all too much like real life. That is the great pleasure here. These artful stories have the force of truth in every line. Margaret Malone. 